The following is a fictional story of events that may happen in the near future. M, New York Stock Exchange. It's a cold, breezy day on Wall Street as markets await the Federal Reserve's announcement for QE4. Futures are up significantly. The Dow Jones just breached its 2008 high of 14,164. Gold just hit an all-time high of 2,900. Silver just breached $100 per ounce. The dollar index is holding at 53. With official unemployment at 16.3%, there is a nervous feeling on Wall Street that if this doesn't work, the world could implode into a depression that will last for the remainder of the decade. 8.19 a.m. Beijing. Chinese officials announced that they can no longer allow Washington to devalue their holdings. After making their concerns private, China accepts that Washington will never stop paying its debts with inflated currency. China makes an official statement from Beijing, quote, we have made our concerns known privately for some time. With QE4 about to be announced today, China will have no choice but to stop purchasing U.S. Treasuries. We have allowed Washington to try to work through their imbalances for four years. But with global inflation and U.S. consumers rapidly shrinking as a percentage of global GDP, we feel that a Western recovery is unlikely until they reform their entitlement programs. 8.45 a.m. New York Stock Exchange. Upon hearing the statement from China, Dow futures have a sharp reversal and begin to drop. Gold leaps past $3,000 per ounce, up $150 per ounce in the last 26 minutes. CNBC awaits a statement from the White House. 8.50 a.m. Washington, D.C. The president makes an official statement to calm investors' fears. He tells Americans that he has spoken with several G20 leaders. They have assured him that they will continue to increase their purchase of treasuries and believe that a strong U.S. economy is the only thing that will bring back global prosperity. He has also spoken to Chairman Bernanke who assures him that a strong dollar will be the result of QE4. The President also reminds Americans that his recent New Deal recovery programs that he passed through executive order will increase the likelihood of a lasting recovery. He also notes that Beijing, since 2009, has slowly been reducing their holdings, so the impact will be minimal. 9.51 a.m. New York. Dow futures fall 850 points in the first 20 minutes of trading. Markets are halted for one hour by the authorities. 10 a.m. Main Street, America. The news about the stock market in China has now spread. A panic begins to sit in and unprepared Americans rush to the grocery store. In an attempt to purchase food and water, Americans that didn't know what was going on are alerted by all of the news stories and panic buying. Within 50 minutes, there is a nationwide rush to the stores. Empty store shelves in America become a reality. 10.52 a.m. New York. Markets reopen and the Dow Jones resumes its collapse. Investors around the world join the sell-off in bonds and stocks and begin to purchase commodities. Unlike the panic of 2008, this time commodities are seen as the only safe haven from a dollar crisis. 11.30 a.m. New York. The Dow falls 1,700 points since reopening. Trading is halted for at least two hours. The Federal Reserve injects $200 billion into the markets and announces that QE4 will be delayed until further notice. Congress has called back to D.C. for an emergency joint session. Some members of Congress are saying that they consider China's statement a financial attack. 12 p.m. Main Street, America. Several cities begin to see civil unrest after grocery stores are forced to close. Traffic in the streets and violence break out. The president puts the National Guard on alert for a possible deployment onto U.S. streets if things don't get under control soon. Several news agencies are reporting injuries at grocery chains and call for the authorities to do something before it gets worse. 12.15 p.m. Toronto, Canada. George Soros tells CNBC that a run on treasuries is imminent and that there is nothing the government can do to stop it. He says it is unfortunate that a controlled decline of the dollar was not coordinated better over the years. Today really could have been avoided if not for the Tea Party politicians who demanded fiscal responsibility and a constitutional government. 
3 p.m., gold closes at 11.53 for the day at $4,053 per ounce. Silver closes at $173 per ounce. The president announces that due to civil unrest in some areas of the country, U.S. stock markets will remain closed for the rest of the day. With the exception of mining and other inflation-related stocks, the majority of U.S. stocks are down significantly due to the sell-off and flight to safety in commodities. The Federal Reserve announces that it will begin to purchase U.S. Treasuries and stocks in order to stabilize the markets. But this only feeds investors' fears of a full-blown Treasury run and collapse of the dollar. 6 p.m. Asia. Asian markets begin a massive sell-off. Dollar collapse rumors begin to take hold of the market. CNBC Asia looks into a possible comics default and complete breakdown in the U.S. economy. Gold spikes in Asia, up 17.50 in the first complete hour of trading. Gold is now at 58.03. 7 p.m., gold and silver bullion dealers across the world have suspended all sales due to no inventory. A comics default is now expected. Several central bank representatives propose a freeze on currency markets and a fixed evaluation of the US dollar in order to calm investors. 7.30 p.m., the United States. The sun sets on America. In the last 12 hours, the world has changed. Americans are glued to their televisions, taking a crash course on a debauched currency. Smoke from fires in the cities have put a dark cloud over the nation. 7.45, the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve announces it will inject $1.5 trillion into the markets in order to stop any further decline in stocks. 7.55 p.m., OPEC. The final nail in the coffin. OPEC nations halt oil trades in U.S. dollars until further notice. They will only accept euros, renminbi, or gold. 7.59 p.m., the Federal Reserve's announcement to inject $1.5 trillion into the markets causes a sharp reversal in overseas markets. Stocks begin to rally even as Main Street melts down. 8 p.m. Manhattan. Gerard Adams, president of the National Inflation Association, sends out an urgent email alert. In it, he informs members that it is with great sadness that the time to warn and prepare Americans for hyperinflation has ended. trade deficit is too large. We must not go back to unwise spending. This is America. George Orwell once wrote that the great enemy of clear language is insincerity. When there is a gap between one's real and one's declared aims, one turns, as it were, instinctively to long words and exhausted idioms like a cuttlefish spurting out ink. You've probably heard confusing phrases like the trade deficit, the falling dollar, the national debt, unfunded liabilities, and so on, which all sound vague and actuarial and vaguely, well, not me. The reality behind these accounting phrases is perfectly monstrous. When someone, a foreigner say, loans money to the American government, what are they getting in return? Well, they are getting promises of interest payments and eventual repayment of the principal. Where does your government get this money? The government is not a business, it does not generate profits in the free market. So where does it get the money to repay its creditors? Are you beginning to understand that it is not dollars that are being sold, or bonds, or agency debt, or treasuries, or anything like that? Where is your government going to get the money to pay off its creditors? It's not pieces of paper, or contracts, or computer bits that are being sold. 
there is only one thing that the government has to sell. Governments have only one asset that they can use as collateral. Your leaders are selling you. When China lends $800 billion to your government, what they get in return is a guarantee that $10,000 plus interest will be taken from your family at gunpoint and shipped overseas. When a farmer gets a loan from a bank, he uses his livestock as collateral. It is the milk and meat his cows will produce in the future that he will use to pay off his loan. The bank is buying a share in his cows. You are the livestock that your leaders use as collateral. The leaders that you cheer for and throw parades for and drop balloons behind and donate money to are selling you to Chinese rulers to the Japanese, to the Nigerians, to South American drug lords with accounts in the Caribbean banking centers, to Russia, to Korea, to Egypt, to Colombia, to Chile, to the Philippines, to Malaysia, and anyone else who is willing to give them a few dollars in return for the blood, sweat, and toil of your future. The flag that you praise and the anthems that you sing and the rulers that you weep and kneel before have as much loyalty to you as a plantation owner had to his slaves. And sadly, plantation slaves had more pride than we do. Plantation slaves did not generally praise their masters for selling them off, for auctioning off the lives, hopes, dreams and futures of their own little children. We can understand that cattle may lick the hand of the farmer who lowers an axe to its neck, because cattle are dumb beasts that cannot comprehend their real relationship with the farmer and his imminent plans for them. What is our excuse? When we chant, USA, 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 when we cheer and bow and beg and scrape and sing and weep with joy that some new farmer now presides over the wholesale dismantling and sale of our family's futures. When we love with obsessive emptiness the leaders who laugh while they auction us off to every tin pot dictator and stockbroker the world over. What is our excuse? Has our pride been so broken? that we lunge with pathetic joy at every new silver-tongued demagogue who pretends to care for us even a tiny little bit. In the future, our children will demand to know why we knelt and cheered as they were sold off on the auctioneer's block. This video and my life's work is my answer to my child. What's yours?